Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Wes Williams. Uh, I'm, I'm a licensed attorney here in California. I've been in the title insurance industry for over 26 years. And about three years ago, I discovered uh, this technology. I went down the rabbit hole of learning about how it works. And uh, I realized at that time that it was the future. And I think it could literally uh, change the way uh, real estate is transacted and even change the uh, title and escrow and settlement process. How many, does anybody know what, what blockchain technology is? At its core level, yeah. It's, um, there's a lot of definitions as to what blockchain technology is, but it's essentially a distributed ledger technology um, that allows a network of computers uh, to come to an agreement as to the state of a ledger. And rather than having um, uh, a centralized organization maintaining <coughs> debits and credits of transactions, uh, you have a network of nodes or computers that agree as to that state of that ledger. And when you think about it, when you have counterparties that function on this ledger system that everybody can agree upon, uh, it, with respect to an, an escrow transaction, because now we, can, we have these things called smart contracts that function similar to what uh, an escrow does. So basically you can automate the business of escrow through these smart contracts. And how they work is basically you can code in condition responses so uh, when you code in a condition, it, it will trigger an automatic um, uh, response to that condition once that condition is satisfied. And you can do this essentially without the need for a human intervention. The entire system gets automated. Everything is transparent on this distributed ledger, therefore reducing or almost eliminating um, the risk of uh, escrow factor defalcations. Uh, as well as the need for reconciliations. So that's kind of how I see it with respect to this technology kind of um, impacting the escrow industry. And from a title perspective, it, it makes sense too because what you can do now is you can create um, and allow for documents to get reported in a more immutable way on this ledger system, um, at least from the perspective of the title industry. And I know there's a lot of people out there looking in to try to um, uh, work with the county recorder offices to get uh, and implement this technology within the, the land record systems as well. And there's a lot more to it than that, but um, that's just a high level overview of how I see uh, blockchain technology impacting uh, the title and escrow industry. And in short, uh, hi everybody. Hope you're all doing well this morning. My name is Exio Van Horst. I'm a seasoned Forex trader for 20 plus years that uh, since 2008, I got into the rabbit hole of cryptocurrencies and cryptocurrencies are scary for most people because just the word crypto is cryptic. So I like to call it digital currencies or digital assets because it is going to be the future of the monetary system. Um, one of the things that I wanted to break down here with my colleagues is basically for that really layman term breakdown of what blockchain technology is you can't have cryptocurrencies without blockchain and it's basically a database of records that are in that cannot be modified in a block each time a record is inserted into that block a chain to another block happens and so on and so forth those records in the past can only be amended in a new block so it's that's the simplest way to explain it. Just imagine, okay, so we have this technology. So blockchain is basically just a super secure database. That's it, we have databases. <laughs> Why do we need blockchain, right? Blockchain is so secure, and what we're talking about is decentralization. Now that in that word alone, whenever I say that, people think, oh my gosh, that's super scary. That means fraud. That means money laundering. That means all kinds of really scary stuff is gonna go on, because that means decentralized, no one's watching it. There's not one person. But actually, decentralized, if you look at it in a different way, what it actually means is that if I make a change to this document here, and I'm a central, centralized, I can make a change, and you're not gonna know what it was before. Make the change, and I go, there it goes. Now, with decentralization, if I have this document, and I wanna make a change to it, every single one of you will see the document before I made the change, 
while I make the change and after I make the change. And everyone validates it. And only once everybody has agreed that this change has been made and has been validated, only then does it get recorded. So actually, there's a myth, there's a misconception about blockchain and how it's actually used for just fraud. It's actually not. It actually streamlines the process and it takes away the fear, honestly. So imagine, I'm a realtor, we have all kinds of disruptions in our industry. We've got iBuyer programs, we've got Zillow, we've got Amazon. Okay, people are scared of technology, but technology you shouldn't be afraid of. Technology should be embracing and how you can streamline your processes. And then you can have elevated services. That's why I really want to educate people on how not to be afraid of blockchain, to understand it and to embrace it. Because that's where it's going. We have a lot of new buyers coming in. And guys, this is not something that's gonna take over our industry in a year, two years. We need, there's a whole thing called STOs. And that is a secure token offering. That is where we want to take real estate on the blockchain is actually to have a seamless process where you can actually, from the very beginning of actually taking on a listing, imagine if you took that listing contract, turned it into a smart contract that's now digitized, put it into a block, now this is your contract with your listing. Let's say your seller decided to no longer use you for your services for whatever reason. Now today, if that happens, we have a lot of agents working on fear. They need to know, sign that, I need to make sure that I show these buyers and that if anybody comes in and buys this property 90 days after this listing is done, that I get credit for it. Now, there's nothing in place to automate that system to check on that. You actually have to call escrow, find out escrow, make sure the agent is trying to screw you. And it happens. There's a lot of unethical things that are going on because people, we have a lot of part-time agents, they're unethical because they're just trying to just do the deal. They're not really just focused on, on actually their clients. But with smart contracts, there is no, gee, how do I feel right now? It is what it is. And that to me is more transparent and actually makes it easier to actually focus on doing your job instead of just being a paper pusher. My TC, she's a little scared about this whole entire process. She's like, oh my gosh, you're going to take me out. Not really. By, by understanding and, and really embracing this technology now, you guys can actually be the authority in your industry to educate others around you. And in the interim, this process technology is not foolproof. There's gonna be version one, version two, version three. So embrace this technology so that you guys can be the ones that help these companies and these technology companies build this technology for you guys. Yeah, part of the reason that we're here today is to help make everybody understand. So blockchain, you know, a lot of times when people say blockchain, it's just like over their head. They, they're like, oh my gosh, it's so technical. And um, one of the biggest problems in this space is because all these guys that are in this space, and no offense to Wes here, he's awesome, <laughs> um, but, but because we understand the technology so well, we just constantly say blockchain, blockchain, and everybody's like, well, what is it? Well, at the end of the day, no one really cares what makes this work. You're not going to need to understand blockchain, yeah, guys. People not only right. care, does it make my life easy? Does it make what I have to do faster or better? And so really, you guys and the real estate industry, there's a lot of you know, FUD in, in this terminology in the, in the digital currency space or blockchain space. FUD stands for fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So people automatically just fear what they don't understand. And so what happens is, is that everyone's like, oh my gosh, blockchain's gonna replace me. And, and that, that's not the case. So what we wanted to do, and what the purpose of the things that we're designing and developing is to help everybody out there be in the know and understand this to not fear it and to become experts in this because the wave of the future, this is it. It's like the internet. No one thought in the 90s, mid 90s, that the internet was going to take over the world and now we can't live without it. Nope. And so blockchain, in essence, in of itself is the new internet. It's the internet yeah. 2.0, basically. Yeah. That's the way to think about it. No, exactly. And, and, and from the real estate perspective, there are opportunities. I mean, uh, right now there are, there are opportunities for uh, escrow agents to get involved. Uh, I'm sure you've heard about people purchasing properties with Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies and that's actually a myth. Um, they're, they're not settling a transaction in cryptocurrency that, that, that can't happen at, at present. 
Um, for the most part, what they're doing is they're exchanging that cryptocurrency and converting it to actual US dollars via currency and then settling the transaction out in a traditional way. Um, and what's interesting is that uh, here in California, there's uh, a number of independent escrow companies that have partnered with um, a, a third party exchange company called BitPay uh, to actually convert the cryptocurrency into fiat and then the independent escrow companies are settling on the transaction um, typically as if they were um, uh, a, title, uh, a title company escrow where they're actually making all the payoffs and um, settling the transaction out and funding the proceeds to the seller but, but it's all done in fiat currency and not crypto that's kind of a, a little you know Misinformation. Kind of yeah, there, there are people um, that are saying, "Oh, I have done this cryptocurrency transaction, and I sold this property in bitcoins." And and as Wes said, and, and Virgin. Well, there are it, a lot of hype words right now. Yeah, and it's it, it's hype. It, it is hype words, and but at the same time, you know, with a new emerging technology, like I use the word blockchain a lot, tons of it, and a lot of my programmer friends are like, "Virgin blockchain." It's like it's like a bad word. It's like the B word because it's a hyped up word. It's like the word that people use to just get, you know, at people's attention. But the truth is, is that you guys aren't gonna need to know blockchain technology. What you guys are using, what it's gonna look like, it's gonna look like a dot loop or a sky slope, or a basically transaction management system that actually on the back end can record to the blockchain. So really for you guys, it's just in being able to embrace it. And so as I'm educating more realtors about um, buying properties with Bitcoin and real estate on the blockchain. I feel a responsibility because now I just, I know that with any new emerging technology, there's going to be people that are in it for the wrong reasons and for the right reasons. And I have noticed that there are some people coming out there going, hey, you want to sell, get Bitcoin for your property and try to convince people to sell their property for less money to get Bitcoins because it's going to appreciate. Now, I have a real problem with that because I think that that is bad information. So for me, I'm putting myself out there to also educate people, not just on blockchain and how to set yourself up, but to understand the digital currencies. Because if you are going to educate your buyers or have a buyer who wants to buy a cryptocurrency, you need to understand. This is just like educating them on taking out money out of their 401k or an investment plan. So you should not be giving this advice to them unless you actually understand it enough to put them in the right places so that they can get the information that they need so that they can make an educated decision. Because this isn't something just to buy with cryptos because it's cool. Um, financial transactions, your house is the biggest investment you have and it should be treated as such. And just because crypto is cool doesn't mean you should be selling your properties for crypto because you're not gonna appreciate it. If you really wanna get into the markets, you do not need to sell your property for below value just to get some Bitcoins. You just go to an exchange and purchase it. So that's why I wanna educate my realtors in my industry because I think it's really can I important. Can I ask everybody a question out here? How many of you, um, I, I saw some hands go up that knew about blockchain uh, what about the digital currencies? Has anyone in here purchased any digital currencies or Bitcoin or, or any of the other altcoins that are out there? You have. I, I have not, but my husband is a Bitcoin joke. Okay, okay, awesome. <laughs> and so. I'm like, here's all your investment, where's the money? He's like, well, right now there's only 29 real cents in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just went up. It almost hit 10,000 this morning, so. Yeah, and, and, that's, and, and that's interesting because um, I think there are, there are different ways to look at these, high, these digital currencies in a certain way. Um, initially, when, when Bitcoin came out, it was intended to be used as an electronic cash, so a medium of exchange, so it's become a speculative investment sort of thing, um, kind of akin to uh, digital gold is how they, you know, people refer to. Um, my, my point is, is that I, I foresee a future where people are going to be using these, these private currencies some decentralized, some centralized currencies as a medium of exchange, including in the purchase of real estate. And right now, um, here in the United States, uh, there is no uh, set classification for these tokens. There are various uh, various regulators out there who regulate these things differently. The SEC looks at them as um, uh, securities, a lot of times because of how they're marketed. Um, you, then you have the CFTC uh, classifying them as uh, commodities. Um, and then you have the IRS looking at it as property. Therefore, these are things when you buy, when you're trading in cryptocurrencies, you have to uh, keep track of all your capital gains and losses and then report those to the IRS. 
You know, FinCEN obviously has gotten involved, and they they see these uh, these digital assets as currencies. So anybody who's trading uh, in these digital currencies has to register as a money services business, um, or in, in in the case of an escrow company, they've included crypto, uh, cryptocurrencies or digital currencies. They call them convertible virtual currencies. Um, in the geographic targeting orders. So you still have to comply with geographic targeting orders and then if virtual currency is involved also, um, obviously treat those as cash and report them accordingly. But you still have to be cognizant of, of how these things are treated here in the States because there's really no set authority. Although the Token Taxonomy Act, um, which is being, uh, they'll being proposed in Congress, is yeah. supposed Absolutely. to clarify all this, but it hasn't, and, and there's various state jurisdictions who are actually you know, on the forefront is Wyoming being one of them who's actually um, been passing all this new legislation to make it more of a crypto-friendly state, allowing companies to come in and, and uh, you know, and, and, you know, foster in, in these jurisdictions. But still, at the federal level, there's still a lot of uncertainty in the regulatory space. Yeah, so what that basically means is that the markets right now are still unregulated. And with that unregulation, there is scam, scammers are running rampant. And so that's why you hear a lot of this crazy stories and all these things about people getting hammered and screwed. That's one of the reasons why, again, we're here, because we love this technology. We're very passionate about it. Um, how, how many of you have traveled outside of the, the US to other countries? You know, it's awesome. So when you went to those other countries, you had to take your US dollars and you had to convert it to that local currency, right? That's exactly an easy way to think about what cryptocurrency, digital currencies really are and how they're changing. In fact, just yesterday, the Bank of, uh, Bank of America, President for Bank of America, announced that they want to see a cashless society. So these are ways that through this technology and digital currencies and digital assets can unite the world in a, in a, a better way and make it easier for people to transact. I could send to you you know, a million dollars in, in <laughs> literally <laughs> minutes and from anywhere in the world of fees, with very low fees, little to none. Now, Wes mentioned um, a company for doing real estate transactions. I just want to elaborate on this just a little bit on how yeah. it affects um, you guys in understanding this because, okay, I just mentioned a minute ago that right now the markets are experiencing a turnaround, it's going into a bullish mode, and Bitcoin went from 3500 just a couple months ago all the way back up to almost $10,000 this morning. It's a really okay. volatile market. It's very volatile. This is the un unregulation. There's what's called market manipulation, okay? There's a lot of it in this space right now. What that means is, is that there's groups of high net worth individuals, hedge funds, whales they call them, that can come into the markets and they can put in large amounts of money to move the market the way that they want to move it in order to profit from it, either going up or down. Okay, so when somebody says I'm going to do a transaction in Bitcoin or one of these other altcoins to buy a property, Right now, one, it wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it because the markets are going bull. And if I were to go into the market and all of a sudden I see a $2 million property and I say to Virgie, I want to buy this property and I'm going to convert my digital currencies to $2 million in fiat because that's the only way it can be done now. Right now in the United States, there is no way to physically purchase a property straight from the cryptocurrency to property. even. If it was a peer-to-peer, -peer, which means if I were to talk with you and you had a $2 million property and you said, hey, um, I'm willing to accept $2 million and in, in we'll use Bitcoin because that's the big 800-pound gorilla, right? You own your house free and clear. It still has to go through title. Still got to go recording. You still have to go through all the processes. The, yeah, the there's government, still due diligence in here. All yeah, of yeah. this. Exactly. All of this has to be there. So. so it's not so easy in that sense. Now, the other piece of that puzzle is that if I truly were to liquidate $2 million of my holdings in, in digital currencies, what would happen is I would go into an exchange, okay, which is like a broker platform where I, I buy and sell my, my digital currencies, and I would have to put in a $2 million sell order. There's not enough liquidity or volume to handle all of the amounts of real estate transactions and purchases. 
Okay, so if I were to go in there and I were to just all of a sudden put $2 million in sell, which is called a sell order, I would actually move the entire markets. So believe it or not, even with as little as $500,000, if I were to go into the markets right now and time it on a specific buy or sell order, I could actually sway the market and cause what would be either a panic buy or a panic sell. As a realtor, having somebody who wants to purchase a property with their Bitcoin, and I go ahead and say, yeah, that's a great idea. It's awesome, we should do it, right? And they do it, they go ahead and take their Bitcoins, they go ahead and get cash, and then the market moves from $3,000 of Bitcoin to $10,000 of Bitcoin. They're really not going to like me and not be happy about that decision. So understanding the markets just enough, not to, to invest, not, not pushing you guys to be investors, but you know, when you are selling a house, Aren't you a better realtor because you bought a house, you understand the process, you understand the market, you feel it with your, buy with your buyers and your sellers? It's different. Yeah. No, that, that is true. It, there is a lot of um, volatility in a lot of these virtual currencies, which is why you're, uh, you're seeing uh, what are called stable coins come out. These are coins, these are uh, cryptographic coins, essentially. They're not really coins, it's, uh, you know, uh, uh, cryptographic code, essentially. But um, uh, they're tied to either a stable fiat currency or they're tied to a hard asset that isn't volatile. Who hasn't heard of the Facebook uh, new coin coming out? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, how many of you have heard of the new Facebook? It's called Libra, yeah. So, oh, wow, it's so, really new. It's so Facebook is, is saying that they're designing their new currency to be a stable coin. Okay, now I was recently invited to Malta to speak specifically about stable coins. There's a very popular one in the digital currency space called USDT, which stands for US Dollar Tether. What a lot of people don't understand on stable coins is there's two types. There's what's called a backed and unbacked. And an unbacked <coughs> is those that are tied to a traditional fiat currency. A backed is tied to a physical asset or a like gold or silver, like traditional. I'm trying to make it really simple. Um, so the, the premise of a stable coin, in reality, none of these coins that are touted as stable are really truly stable coins because you would have to have, they have to be backed dollar per dollar to the actual market cap of whatever those tokens are. So we're talking there needs to be $2 trillion or more based on the, the fluctuation in the markets of that money, physical fiat currency that's backing that, that token, okay? So that if somebody were to liquidate it or move out or it fails, investors would be able to still recoup their funds. Okay, that's a very simple- That's a true stable coin. That's a true stable coin. So really, we would want a government, but in the sense of digital currencies, the premise of what it's built on, the principles, is they don't want the governments to be attached or have anything to do with it. They want it to be a free form of transactional processes between individuals without any intervention. Yeah. And so, so people were talking about self-regulation, but that's that's a pipe dream because self-regulation, according to whose perspective, right? Right. Yeah. So, so self-regulation. As much as I love that that term, and in in some ways I hate to say it, it's a pipe dream because hey, let's face it, people can't control themselves, so they can't self-regulate, and so even though we're proponents of regulation, which is in some people's in this sphere is like, we're, oh my gosh, you're the, the anti of digital currencies, but not really. You have to have regulation in order to have stability. Okay, we so. Need, we need to understand how we can move forward because right now the landscape's changing so much that people don't know where it's going to land and it's really hard for people to move forward. So we are pro-regulation in a way that it's, it, it brings a balance. So that, that's what we need for mass adoption. We need people to get comfortable. We need people to understand it. Before any of this technology can be really realized, it has to be in a way that people feel comfortable with it. Right, and with Facebook's new announcement with their Libra coin, um, in reality, and I think you guys would agree or yeah. you can speak on this. So it's really not a decentralized coin. No. It's, it's really a centralized coin. And so, that is scary and a lot of the guys in the digital currency world are like anti the Facebook thing. I, I give kudos to Facebook, not that I'm promoting their token by any means, um, but I do give kudos to them because 
with them doing this, they are making the world more aware yes. of this technology and, and the digital currencies. And there are many, many, many other currencies out there in the digital currency space other than just Bitcoin. Oh, so many. Bitcoin is the 8,000 pound gorilla because it was number one, it was first. No, exactly. And I know we talk a lot about the cryptocurrency side and um, you know, Bitcoin kind of started it all. Money it was the first application um, to be put on a blockchain. And, and all of this is, is brings up the concept of uh, centralized versus decentralized. So we have centralized currencies now, um, particularly these, uh, these stable coins, because ultimately somebody has to uh, custody all the fiat that's backing these things, and there has to be transparency and audits done, which, you know, like you mentioned Tether, Tether got in a lot of trouble because nobody could confirm they really had a one-to-one -one backing with, with the dollars that they had in reserve.